Um, a, a common definition of recession is two negative quarters of GDP growth, or at least that's something that's been true in past recessions. When we've seen that, mm -hmm. there has usually been a recession. Because that's not the definition. That is not the definition. That's something that's been true in past recessions. What a recession really means is a broad-based contraction yeah. in the economy. Because that's not the definition. You're splitting hairs. I mean, if the technical definition is two quarters of contraction, you're saying that's not a recession? That's not the tech. No? That's not the technical definition. Thursday, that first reading of second quarter GDP, there's a possibility this is a negative number. Two consecutive quarters of, of negative growth. That's not the definition. The definition of a recession is a decline in output for two consecutive quarters, or about six months. That's not the definition. A recession is just two consecutive quarters of economic decline. When we talk about the possibility of a recession, what is a recession? A recession is two consecutive quarters. Two consecutive quarters. Two consecutive quarters. Two consecutive quarters of declining GDP. Because as you know, it's two consecutive quarters of down GDP. That signals it is actually a definition of a recession. Because that's not the definition. And if we don't have two consecutive quarters of negative growth, we might have one quarter of growth so deep that it's classified as a recession. If you happen to be following the story of the two quarters now in a row that we've had of negative GDP growth, you probably have also heard from many people across the administration that we're not actually in a recession right now we are in a transition and when we say transition we're not talking about puberty blockers or bye-bye boobies anything like that we're talking about a whole transition of the economy itself and it's become pretty clear that this administration looks at a recession a lot differently than we have in the past but fear not the leader of the free world has a solution to this problem and we're going to hear it right now cue the video and let me speak to one other issue let me speak to one other issue and whether or not there, we are in a recession. The Inflation Reduction Act will add another $370 billion in clean energy tax credits in reconciliation, including incentives to accelerate domestic production of solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, and critical materials processing. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, right after that speech was finished, the White House issued a press release, a statement from President Biden on the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. And in it, he says, we will improve our energy security and tackle the climate crisis by providing tax credits and investments for energy projects. This will create thousands of new jobs and help lower energy costs in the future. He goes on to say, this is the action the American people have been waiting for. This addresses the problems of today as well as investments in our energy security for the future. And I hope all of you found that as reassuring as I did that this administration is taking the correct path forward when it comes to bringing down inflation and getting us out of this recession that we are currently in. For the sake of my own sanity and demonetization, we're gonna talk about something else tonight specifically, and that is the SEC. There was a lot of talk this week about Gary Gensler, his offshore accounts. And it seems like some people are forgetting where Gary Gensler came from, how he came up on Wall Street, where he made his money. We'll talk about that. And I want to talk about exactly what is going on right now with the SEC and Congress. And I'll give you two guesses on what they're not talking about. Payment for order flow or transparency for institutional shorts. Neither one of those are on the floor right now. But they are talking about some things in the SEC. We're going to get into it tonight. And hopefully, if we don't run out of time, we'll get a chance to take a peek behind the curtain with Uncle Lou. You people by now should not understand who the fuck I be talking to behind the scenes and who my people talk to behind the scenes and who the fuck we are. But before we do any of that and get way too far ahead of ourselves, shoot the speeder. <laughs> Good evening, beautiful people. Guys, what's going on? It is Sunday, July 31st, 2022. It's the last day of the month. August 1st is tomorrow, and we start a new week and one of the slowest months historically for the stock market. 
And a lot has happened in the last couple of days since we last spoke. By the way, thank you to everyone who came by the channel on Wednesday night to the live stream. Those who help with donations or the mods, or if you just came by to hang out and say what's up. Thank you so much. And when we get in a new place, there's going to be a new intro. There's going to be all kinds of shout outs going on. Just stay tuned. It's coming, I promise. Just so you guys know, on Wednesday night, I mentioned that the algorithm has changed on YouTube. They are now asking creators to put out a minimum of three shorts per day, if not a live stream per day, in order to keep up with the changes that YouTube has made as far as whether or not they're going to promote a video to you according to the algorithm. So if you guys can do me the big favor, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and turn on the bell notifications. I'm trying not to have to make three to four videos a day to put out to you guys, which are unnecessary. So that would be a huge help. Okay, so what's going on with Gary Gensler and the SEC? Now, apparently, Gary Gensler was exposed this week. He is very rich, and he might have some offshore accounts, and possibly that he might be shorting AMC and GME. I haven't found any proof of that. I do know that Gary Gensler, and we've talked about this on this channel for over a year now, used to work on Wall Street, and he was at Goldman Sachs for almost 20 years. He's worth right now about $120 million. But that's the rumor that was floating around. So eliminating the rumors, what I can tell you guys for a fact is that Gary Gensler spent 18 years working on Wall Street at Goldman Sachs, making billion dollar deals. And he did that until he was nominated by Bill Clinton, former President Clinton, to be the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury. At the end of the day, guys, unfortunately, when Gensler's done as SEC chair, he's going to be looking for a soft, cushy place to land. Just like Janet Yellen was once in charge of the Fed, she has now switched over to the Treasury Department, doing a worse job there. But Gary's going to be looking for his speaking fees as usual to service his friends on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, and so on. He is not out there for the best interest of the retail investor. And so you may be thinking to yourself, Mass, why are you so confident about that? You know, what are they doing behind the scenes? They're supposed to be working on payment for order flow and transparency and the gamification. And they just made fun of us in a commercial. Well, this week, the subject matter of the SEC and rule changes were brought up on Capitol Hill. Congress actually did discuss a lot of the things going on at the SEC. And here's the subject matter that was brought up last week. Watch. Uh, Madam Speak Speaker, every day the capital markets are under attack here with this Securities and Exchange Commission. The climate disclosure rule, which was released in March of this year, totals over 500 pages, over 500 pages, and had over a thousand technical footnotes. And oh, by the way, the SEC initially gave everybody 30 days to uh, comment on that. 30 days. Now, there, the, you can't even get through the analysis of the original 500 pages, much less the thousand technical footnotes on that within that 30 days. Everything this week that I've been able to pull up has been talking about climate change and zero carbon emissions and everything else besides the things that are really affecting retail right now. Just because he holds the position of commissioner of the SEC and he's supposed to be looking out for our best interest doesn't mean that he is. Clearly, they are on a different path right now, Congress and the SEC. And I, and I just bring this to your attention because I want you guys to have a good understanding of what the priorities are when it comes to this administration and what we can be looking forward to in the near future. All right, but it's getting really late. I want to be able to catch up with Uncle Lou. So we'll talk about this hopefully in the future sometimes. Without further ado... Please, Lou, tell us what's coming this week. Back, whatever, because this weekend, there's nothing significant happening. Nothing. What I'm waiting for now is how they're going to function starting next week with no money. You people by now should understand who the fuck I be talking to behind the scenes and who my people talk to behind the scenes and who the fuck we are. Who the hell are you? Put him with the other Yankee Mari. Gone. If you don't get it, Surprise, 
Hello, 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 and if you're still curious after watching that, how this type of material is effective for AMC hodlers, take a listen. It's just one of these things that came up like, you know, the kids. Just because one, um, at a certain age, and a lot of people here, the age demographics are like 18, 20, 25, 27. They're people that are older, but a majority of a lot of the people in AMC are younger than me. They could be my kid. I was always wondering where the demographics were for this channel. Makes a lot more sense now. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. As always, thank you for all the likes, the views, the comments. My new subscribers, my OGs, I appreciate each and every one of you. We're here to break the wheel. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Massalorian, and I'm out.